Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, so you may be wondering why I'm wearing all this denim today. Um, this is actually from like the year 2000. I had to break it up. Because today's denim day. Um, and denim day is actually um, a way to um, bring awareness to sexual assault. Um, because of a case in Italy, I forget what year, but it's a way to acknowledge that there needs to be um, more awareness, bystander intervention, so on and so forth. So I feel as if it's very um, ironic that today, I know this is a, an event or a play that happens every day. However, on Denim Day, I'm making a connection here related to sexual assault and survivors and um, suicide completion. For some individuals I've known over the years that have struggled with moving beyond or being a survivor and being able to get to a place of, of um, hope and being able to be um, independent and sufficient um, is a struggle for some that have um, been impacted by sexual assault, whether it was as a child, incest, or something along those lines. Um, either way, it's, there's some violation there. And sometimes that may trigger some mental health issues or concerns that may not be rectified and ends up leading to suicide completion. Um, I've known so many wonderful people, um, at least seven or so throughout my life, and I'm 40 years old, by the way, that completed suicide. Um, and they have, have all races, genders, um, profession, socioeconomic, you name it. So there was not like a, some type of, oh, this type of person or, you know, anything like that. It's just the impacting so many across the board. Uh, so, you know, this, this is a very, um, it was a um, light way to deal with an issue that we need to be more serious about mm -hmm. as a society and being able to check in on individuals related to their mental health and their just overall well-being. Um, it's, I, I love this uh, list because it helps me think of uh, my childhood, so I like the connection of focusing on things that resonated as a child that brought us joy and happiness. And um, so it's funny because I lived in D.C. for about three years. I moved back to Milwaukee last fall to be the health commissioner. I'm from Milwaukee, so a lot of my childhood experiences are rooted here. And as most kids in the 80s, we were all fascinated about astronauts and space, um, as well as, you know, here in the 60s and 70s, too. But where I'm going is the Challenger um, tragedy that happened in, uh, was in 86. So I wanted to be an astronaut, and I was, like a lot of other kids, seeing that happen, watching it in class, and being like, oh, I don't want to die that way. <laughs> um, and just, you know, abandoning those dreams. So being in DC, um, this had to be about 2016, um, and just being in that intense environment, um, stakes are high. You know, DC is the you know, place to be for policy and, you know, whatever, like, pinnacle of your discipline, so public health. And it's a very stressful, but, um, important time for me as a person to grow and kind of move beyond my comfort zone of being back home. So I was reflecting on what brought me joy as a child and which stopped that, you know, where, where did I like have this like moment of fear to move into my greatness or whatever my purpose was. And I was like, oh yeah, remember I wanted to be an astronaut. I was just obsessed with space <coughs> and just all of these cool things. So I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get a tattoo. So I actually have this tattoo in my arm. But I actually have the challenger on my arm. <laughs> and the reason why I got that is just, again, to kind of remind myself of like who I am as the little girl in me, to um, have joy and like tap into that joy of being a child and, and being fearless and having hope, but also to push beyond tragedy because we've all experienced tough times in our lives. And some people, again, are not able to move beyond that in, they, in their lives. Um, so we need to be able to, within ourselves, um, reflect and make sure we're taking care of ourselves, but also be supportive and be compassionate of others so that we can provide a support network 
instead of coming at it from like, oh, you're all it's you're on your own, or that's just your your you know however people can be, which can be very cruel and cold. So just kind of tapping into that compassion. Um, and then the other point too about the records. Um, my father was a musician, and he had the bomb record collection. <laughs> so I could relate to a number of the uh, references about music and the hissing and popping of records and new records and reading at the record, um, the inserts and all of that. And my father passed away, uh, he was 83 in 2012 um, from dementia. But he also, um, I would say, kind of, <coughs> even though 83, you could, would say that's a good long life, but he was an alcoholic. So he, that was his way of coping with tragedy and pain in his life. He had the addiction um, disease of alcoholism, but that was his way of self-medicating and kind of moving beyond whatever his um, pain was in, earlier in life. But music was like his like savior, if you will. So um, being able to uh, find joy in music and the arts uh, to just get by day to day. So after he passed, um, he always would tell us, like, you got to take care of my records. So I still have his record collection, and every once in a while I'll pull out a record, and kind of it'll help me kind of stay connected, although he's you know in another realm right now. Um, but from the public health perspective, um, oftentimes we focus just on clinical, like shots and like medication and pills and things like that. But the mental health side, the counseling, and making sure individuals have access to psychiatry and a host of other mental health services is something that we continue to lack and struggle with. Not just here in Milwaukee, but it's pretty much across the country. There's a shortage of professionals and just a lot of stigma behind why people need this. Why do we need to make a space for this? Why do we need to have health insurance to pay for this? Why do we need why do we need this? And you know, in, in my role as a health commissioner, um, I'm trying to fix a whole, if you will, the health department in Milwaukee has had better days, and my goal is to move us beyond um, some of the issues we've had over the years. But mental health, we don't have the funding to be able to address it, and it continues to come up time and time again. So what is the city doing to address mental health? And we defer to the county because the county has a behavioral health division and they provide um, mental health services, especially for those people that are in crisis. There's the uh, upgraded complex that's out at the medical complex. They've added more beds um, because of the need, but there's still not enough. Um, our goal in public health, health is to prevent. So making sure we're taking care of individuals um, earlier and not just dealing with the side effects or dealing with the aftermath if someone is in a crisis situation. So um, just reflecting you know, on today's um, every brilliant thing and thinking about just personal experiences and professional experiences, but just my takeaway to everyone is, you know, we have, to, we have the ability to make our weather, if you will, and be kind and compassionate to one another. It's a decision point, it's a choice point. So we don't know what people are going through. Um, we're, sometimes we're quick to judge or be short with individuals. But my request is just to tap into your heart and lead with your heart and just have some compassion and kindness for one another. So 